students i mean boys and girls today we are going to cover the chapter synthetic fibers and plastics it is a science chapter from class 8th textbook it's a it's from the ncert syllabus well we all know that you know clothes have become integral part of our life now these clothes are made of fabrics and these fabrics are made of fiber so it is important for us to know what is a fiber but before that we should know where the fiber word has originated from so fiber is a word which has it is a lat which is originated from a latin word called fibra and fiber is a type of thread which is used to manufacture various type of fabrics ropes wires nets and so many other things the fibers are of two types one are the natural fibers which are obtained from natural sources such as plants or animals and other are synthetic fibers which are obtained from artificial sources you would have already studied in your previous class about the natural fibers now natural fibers are basically vegetable fibers which are which can be taken out from the plants the examples are cotton hemp jute flax etc and there are there are some animal fibers which are obtained from silkworms Uh, sheep etc and the examples are silk worm silk is there wool is there cashmere wool is there angora is there so all these are examples of animal fibers now moving forward to what are synthetic fibers so synthetic fibers are basically made by human beings therefore they are called man made fibers synthetic fiber is basically a chain of polymers which are made of a chemical substance and they are joined together now these small parts are called monomers which are joined together to form a bigger unit which is which is called polymer and if you if you know polymer is a word which is derived from two greek words that is poly and mar poly means many and mar means parts or units now what are the various type of synthetic fibers so the synthetic fibers that we are going to cover in this particular chapter are rayon nylon and polyester and acrylic so the first and the foremost we'll cover rayon which is also called artificial silk now if you see rayon is a man made fiber which is created from cellulose extracted from trees and it can imitate the texture of silk wool or linen and we also should know that it is the oldest manufactured fiber and the production of this fiber started somewhere in france in 1880s and this was developed as a cheap alternative to the silk rayon can also be mixed with cotton to make bed sheets or it can be mixed with wool to make carpets one very important thing that people were not knowing about rayon before 1920s till the time dupont chemicals acquired the rights of rayon and made it a household word now we'll talk about nylon if you see rayon was extracted from wood the cellulose was extracted from wood but nylon was the first fully synthetic fiber 
made by human being and it is very strong hard and water resistant it was first produced in somewhere in 1935 at dupont's research facility so if you see both in mylar and rayon both were actually promoted by dupont Nylon can also be used in a lot of materials such as cloth, socks, parachutes, ropes, carpets, fishing nets, etc. Because nylon is so strong, so even you know, people prefer to use it in parachutes. Polyester. Well, polyester is a synthetic fiber that can be made into thread or yarn. and it can be woven into synthetic fabric and they are often used to make clothes and home furnishing well polyester is also known as pet now if you want to know that how polyester is made polyester is made from coal air and water and petroleum it was developed somewhere back in 20th century and polyester gets its name from a combination of chemical unit which is called ester and if you know this ester is a chemical which also gives fruits their smell now polyester can be also combined with wool to form polywool or it can be combined with cotton to form polycot the majority of polyesters are non biodegradable so what does it mean it means that if you use a polyester fabric shirt it will last for many many years and it will not decompose till at least 20 to 200 years while well, moving forward acrylics now acrylics are also another form of synthetic fibers which are used to make shawls blankets and sweaters etc So they are much cheaper as compared to natural wool. Therefore, and they come into variety of colors. So that is why these acrylic, uh, you know, fabrics became very popular. Well, boys and girls, coming to the characteristics of synthetic fibers. Now the fibers which are made from synthetic fibers are basically they soak less water. So what does it essentially means? It means that probably they'll dry faster. And some of the you know synthetic fibers are even water resistant. But they are not fire resistant. They catch fire easily. And these synthetic fibers are even more durable and cheaper than natural fibers. And they are readily available and they can be also dyed into many colors. So that's why they are becoming very popular. Now these uh, synthetic fibers are made out of petrochemicals and not from plants and animals. So these are some of the characteristics of the synthetic fibers. Well now we'll cover the topic plastics. The word plastic is derived from the Greek word plastikos and it uh, means uh, basically capable of being shaped or molded. Now chemistry wise if you see plastics are basically organic polymers which are made of high molecular mass and they are also derived from petrochemicals. Now some plastics can be shaped only when they are freshly made and then afterwards they become hard and others can be changed even by heating them up or by melting them up so we'll cover in detail in the coming slides now first and foremost we should know the structure of plastics now basically uh, you know there are linear polymers and plastics made of cross link polymers now the plastics which are made of linear polymers basically uh, it's it's made of a simple chain in which monomers exist in a single line and if you see cross link polymers here the branch they can be branched or linear but 
there are covalent bonds between the polymers and because of these covalent bonds they, they become very strong and stable so we'll cover the various examples of linear polymers and cross-link polymers plastics in the coming slides two type of plastics basically we are going to cover two kind of uh, plastics that is thermoplastics and thermoset plastics in this chapter thermoplastics are made from linear and branched and branched polymers and these plastics can be easily deformed by heating or they can be easily bent and some of the examples are polythene bags which you use on daily basis or some pvc uh, made items which you use on daily basis as far as thermoset plastics are concerned they are made from heavy cross link polymers and once these cross links are formed these polymers take a shape that cannot be changed without destroying the plastic now one very good example is the chair the plastic chair in your classroom itself that is made of a, a polypropylene which is a very good example of thermoset plastic some other examples are like bakelite or melamine now bakelite if you see is basically a poor conductor of heat and electricity and it is used for making handles of various cooking utensils and since it is also a poor conductor of electricity it is also used for making electrical switches plugs wires so many other things and uh, as far as melamine is concerned melamine basically resists fire and can tolerate heat therefore it is used for making various kind of kitchenware items and these it is also used in fabrics that resist fire especially if you see the firemen they use clothing which are made of melamine fabrics now we'll quickly cover the characteristics of plastics no plastics are basically non reactive that because they don't corrode with water and air like unlike iron iron corrodes very fast we all know but if you see you have not seen a, any plastic getting corroded because it doesn't reacts therefore we use the plastic and material for you know for for storage purpose we use plastic containers or we use plastic buckets for storing water or stuff like that the second characteristic is it is very light in weight yet strong and durable you know if you go two decades back and if you ask you know if you ask your or if you ask your forefathers that what kind of buckets they were using so they were primarily using metal buckets which were quite you know heavy and uh, you know uh, difficult to handle and quite expensive also but if you see these days we are using plastic buckets which are quite strong and durable then the third characteristic is basically its moldable plastics can be converted into various shapes and sizes you see you know chairs of various sizes various designs similarly buckets you know containers bottles all these come in various shapes and sizes so what does it suggest that it is very easily moldable then these uh, plastics some of the plastics are poor conductors of heat and electricity so they can be used for you know for making handles of cookers or frying pans or they can be used in screw drivers or they can be used as testers etc and some of the plastics are also used as for non stick coating now if you see a lot of non stick coating utensils uh, you know the 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 coating which is used is teflon coating and the teflon is basically made of plastics and then there are plastics can be fire resistant is also like we have discussed already melamine is a fire resistant type of plastic which is used for making fireman clothings
now we have almost covered the topic plastic now we'll talk of is plastic environment friendly so the answer is friends no it is not environment friendly because plastic takes several years to decompose and it is in the category of non biodegradable therefore what is suggested is that probably one should refrain for using plastic bags and should rather than use cotton or jute bags but since you know thermoplastics can be recycled so plastics ga- bags can be used for recycling or in case it has to be thrown then it should be thrown as a separate non biodegradable waste so with this we have almost covered the chapter that is synthetic fibers and plastics so if you have liked this video and if you feel it will be helpful and useful to you and it will it will improve your knowledge then please do hit the like button and you can also share it with your friends and you can also subscribe this channel so that you will get notifications of the various uploads that we will be doing well friends with this i'll say you bye bye as of now and uh, we'll meet again with a new video thank you take care